Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to talk about the types of interactive documents in InDesign Creative Cloud. We will learn about the type of interactive documents that you can create in InDesign and uh, what are they good for and what are the differences between them. So what are their advantages and disadvantages? I will talk about interactive PDFs, PDF forms, Swift presentations, EPUB ebooks, and digital publishing suite apps. So these are the things you can create in InDesign for digital publishing. And first, let's just start with the interactive PDFs. So in an interactive PDF, you can have quite a lot of things, uh, interactive elements that you can add, like hyperlinks, cross-references, buttons, interactive table of contents, bookmarks, videos, and audio files. And um, I have an example here. Let me just show you how it works. So using quite a lot of panels in InDesign, like object states, buttons and forms, hyperlinks, and media, these are all things that you can uh, use together with interactive PDFs. And normally, whenever you start an interactive document, you should go to File, New, and choose Document in InDesign. And the intent should be set to digital publishing or web. Um, I will talk about the difference between these in, in the future episodes of this series. But for now, it's just good to know that from digital publishing, you can already find the main uh, screen sizes like iPad, iPhone, Kindle and Android as well. And of course, you can also make changes to the sizes here. But it's good to know that the intent can be already set to digital publishing or web. And for web, obviously, you will have the screen sizes. Now, I'm going to talk about the PDF uh, or interactive PDF and how it works. Uh, but let's just have a look at this example here. So I'm going to go to the first page and just show you, or a uh, table of contents is probably the most interesting part, um, show you that all of these elements here are added in InDesign simply by, by just typing them in. But all of these are actually linked uh, as cross-references to the whole document. I am using a table of contents which can be generated in InDesign. So uh, it's the same way as you would do it for print. But because it will be saved as an interactive PDF, it will have already links assigned to these um, table of contents elements and they will immediately go to that set location in the document. Now, apart from this, we also have buttons here. So like this next page, previous page, and table of contents here on the top, these are all buttons. The reason why I can't select them is because they are on a master page. So they are master page elements. And I can go to that master page and then you will be able to see that we can actually select these elements as well. And if I go to the buttons and forms uh, panel, here you can see that for example, this one here on the right, the next page, has actually an action assigned to it, um, and that is to go to the next page. It's not all, because I can even assign appearance changes depending on there's a rollover action or click action, for example. So for each of these, I can set up a different uh, version of the button. So it will work just like it would work on a website when you have a rollover action assigned to an element. The table of contents would go to a destination, which is specified, and that is uh, the table of contents in this document. And there are so many other pages. Uh, these are all my pages where I can go to in my document. So I can use buttons to travel around in the document. And I can show you that from the actions, there are actually quite a lot of things I can do with these buttons. I can even go to a URL. I can uh, show or hide buttons and forms. Uh, I can also start playing a sound or a video, uh, also start um, uh, doing an animation but these are the option here below swift only that are only available for swift animations or swift uh, exported files uh, for pdf interactive pdfs these are the additional options that we can do from the default couple of options here on the top 
but there will be a video specifically for buttons uh, in this uh, series so I will come back to all these options and if you are interested to learn more about this I will uh, go further into this and talk in more details about buttons so now that we just know that these are all set up here on the top and there is also an interactive um, table of contents we can have a look at the actual pdf file so i'm going to start acrobat and it automatically comes up with this message that it would like to start the pdf in full screen why not let's start it so now i can use uh, my mouse to click on the pages and you you might notice that we have a nice uh, transition between the pages as well so i can nicely uh, use right and left arrows and go right and left in the whole document but i can also jump to another uh, page like let's just jump to this one page 16 i can see we are there and if i want to i can go back to the table of contents just notice that slight uh, change on the button when i hover over it and when i click on it it takes me back to the table of contents plus i can also use the next page previous page buttons and that's a great way to set it up your navigation to use a master page for it so if you are familiar with InDesign, I'm sure you know how to use master pages. And um, instead of just use it for a logo or a header image, uh, you can also add your um, buttons there for navigation. Uh, let me just go to another page. And that this one is here an actual video. Now you can also, as I said, put videos into your PDF, uh, interactive PDF documents, which you can start by just simply clicking on it. And you can see we can scroll through the video. So that's another great feature in interactive PDFs. So to summarize the benefits of an interactive PDF, first of all, the final document will look exactly the same way as you designed it. That's a great thing already. Second, it's great for desktop use because we have so many navigation elements here and also it's very easy to open a PDF on a desktop computer so you can really share it with anyone because um, it's an easy access to this type of documents because whoever has Adobe Reader on their computer they will be able to open it and almost every computer has at least Adobe Reader or maybe even Acrobat and there's also another big plus um, that you only need InDesign to create them. You don't need any additional applications. You don't even need Acrobat to create these interactive PDFs. So if I go back to InDesign, I can show you that there is an option when I export and choose uh, PDF Interactive. So that's the only thing you need to make sure you check before you save your PDF file that it's set to uh, interactive instead of print. And when you save it as a interactive file, um, you will have different options as well. So you won't have anything related to print. Here you will have additional options for the image handling like compression and JPEG quality and resolution. Plus you will have an option for setting up the page transitions. Uh, whether to include all the forms and media or just have them as an appearance only and then you have more options here as well related to the layout of the PDF and view like here you can choose uh, to have the actual size or just fit to page and you can also choose to open in full screen mode um, which is a presentation option that's something that I used as well so there's quite a lot of additional options that you get when you save the PDF as an interactive PDF for, from InDesign. And once again, I just would like to mention that there is um, only the InDesign needed to be able to create this format. So that, that's all great. These are the advantages, but what are the weaknesses of an interactive PDF? Well, the mobile app support is not consistent throughout every platform so you will definitely have issues if you want to use these pdfs on uh, mobile devices and the design is not responsive at all so it won't change from horizontal to vertical again for example um, reading it on an ipad and um, you will also have quite a limited options for selling this type of content so if you are planning 
to sell um, digital publishing content, then um, you won't be able to use uh, Amazon, you won't be able to use uh, Apple's uh, iBook store, you won't be able to use any uh, main um, online stores where you can sell digital content, digital published content. So interactive PDFs won't work on any of the major ebook stores, as I said, and that's quite a big um, downside of this format. But interactive PDFs are great for non-profit desktop use to share content such as business documents, which are usually text-heavy, and that's something that you can really, really easily work uh, in InDesign with. And then you can also share technical manuals or user guides, uh, like this document itself, as well as more like a user guide uh, or like notes uh, for educational purpose. You can also, it's, it's good for product catalogs, um, which will be mainly, uh, there will be lots of tables and images. And you can also use them for advertising and promotional materials because it can embed fonts, which can make really nice designs for your interactive uh, PDFs. But there's another thing that you can also uh, create, and it's also still p a PDF format, but it's a special PDF format, it's a form. Now let me just open a form for you, just to show you a, a standard form that uh, can be created in InDesign. This is how it looks like when you open it uh, in Reader or in Acrobat. And um, this is a great format to gather data. And it can be created in InDesign only, or Acrobat only, or using the two together. Obviously, if you use both of these applications together, that's when you will have the most options for creating a form. And um, in InDesign, you can create a nice layout, and then using the InDesign form tools, uh, you can add combo boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, and even digital signature fields. And uh, Acrobat is still useful uh, if you want to finalize your form, uh, even if it's prepared in InDesign. But this is like a finalized uh, form which we can interact with. So here in Acrobat, I can highlight the fields and I can uh, add details to it. I just need to make sure I have the, the correct tool selected, so I can add checkboxes, I can type, and so on and so forth. And usually when you um, set up a, a form, you can also make sure that you will be able to gather the data, so people will be able to submit their form through the PDF that you created, so they don't need to save the PDF and upload it anywhere. They can just send all the data they added to the form and then you will be able to compile all that and uh, have a summary of all the details that you gathered through uh, the PDF form that you shared. So that's a, another very useful thing and I'm going to talk about that in more details in this uh, series. Let me show you another thing that you can do from uh, InDesign and save. So this is a Swift file, which is a flash format, and it's saved out again directly from InDesign. And it has this fancy page curl effect, which is only available in this format. Plus you can add as many animations as you want. So you can animate the text, you can animate images. And for that, we have a whole set of options here in InDesign. So we have the animation panel. Plus we also have a timing panel, which can help to add these animated elements. So this is another great format. And this is once again, something you can create directly in InDesign without any further help from other applications. And as I said, um, this is a great format, but once again, it has a lack of mobile support. So you won't be able to really use these on uh, I iPads or iPhones uh, because of the flash technology. This is actually, if you want to use it for presentations, for which the animations are us usually useful, um, it's actually more time consuming to, s to do it in InDesign than to create them, uh, the whole presentation in Keynote or, or other applications like uh, Prezi. So it's useful and it can be embedded into websites um, and it can be used on desktop uh, computers as well. Um, but it's again, not the best format for digital publishing. But now we arrive to the last two categories, 
EPUB ebooks and uh, digital publishing suite apps. These are actually the most uh, common formats used for digital publishing. So let me just show you my iPad and on my iPad I have uh, the Kindle Reader application open and this is a ebook that I have here. So it's an EPUB and they are all based on HTML and CSS. So it's it's uh, something that you have to know about uh, coding if you if you want to create these formats. And there's two main kinds of them. There's the um, simple layout where we have resizable text, and we have the fixed layout where we have uh, mainly images. The advantages of uh, an EPUB is that it's very small in file size. It can contain interactive content and media and it can be sold in online bookstores like Amazon or Barnes and & Noble and it is perfect for mobile devices. The disadvantage is, is that it's more com complicated to create them and because well, first of all it must follow lots of specifications to make sure you can sell them and uh, you need a significant time uh, to plan how to create them and uh, and also to, to, to turn them into the final format and coding experience is needed as I said. So that's one option which you can use for uh, mobile devices but the other option which um, the new Creative Cloud version of InDesign offers is the digital publishing suite apps for which we have two main panels here the Folio Overlays and Folio Builder and there's also a um, separate application called the DPS uh, App Builder which uh, is helping you to upload content to the uh, Apple App Store. Let me just show you one of these. So I'm just going to switch to this application, the Web Designer Magazine application. And here we can have a look at one of these issues. This is, by the way, called um, multifolio application, uh, which is something that you won't be able to do if you have Creative Cloud membership. What you will be able to do is a single folio app, which means that you can create only one uh, issue of your magazine, for example. But if you want to release more issues, you will have to release them as separate apps. With your Creative Cloud membership, you can create unlimited apps, but they will always be single folio apps. So if you want to create the multifolio apps, for that you need um, either the professional or the enterprise edition of uh, digital publishing suite. But let's just have a look at this magazine. So I'm going to open it up. And once again, as you can see, these type of uh, apps look much better uh, than the EPUBs. Uh, they are much more similar to the printed magazines. Uh, actually, they look exactly the same most of the time. But also, there are some magazines which will only be published in digital format. Uh, and usually, they are more interactive and have more uh, videos and animation and elements like that. Now, this uh, format for digital publishing is, uh, again, has it has some advantages and disadvantages. It's very popular for magazines and uh, it's great because once you create something like this and uh, you upload it to the App Store, you will have a huge audience that might be interested in using these, uh, this content that you just created. So you have full control of uh, all the layouts. And once again, you use InDesign. And if you are familiar with InDesign for print design, then you can use all those, all that knowledge for uh, digital publishing and creating these apps. And uh, you can also set up single or dual orientation, which means you can also set it up. So if it's a portrait or landscape format, and if I, if I change my l format, I just move around my iPad, then as you can see, uh, the whole layout changes accordingly as well on my iPad. And you can set it up to work with multiple screen sizes, but there's also some uh, disadvantages with this format, and that's mainly uh, the big file size, and that you also need approval by Apple if you want to publish the apps on the App Store. 
So there's still some of these disadvantages, but mainly I would say this is the most interesting way of releasing uh, digital publications using InDesign. So that's all I wanted to go through in this part of the digital publishing series. I hope you found it useful. And if you would like to learn more, make sure you join me next time as well here on Tuts Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention.